Okay, Shelly here, Repurpose My Way. I have got a primitive lantern, lantern project. Yeah, that's what I'd call it. Um, I don't know if, if you've seen a video that I did recently on going to the biggest flea market not far from where I am. Uh, you may recognize these hoops. Now they came, what is, is it, five? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so they came in sets of six, like bundles. Um, and they all have the, the extra circle that goes around. They come in two pieces. But these I thought were unique because I had never seen them with the bottom on them before. So I thought that was pretty neat. Uh, so I'm going to do some different things with these. I want to make some primitive lanterns uh, using some screens that you'd buy like for windows. I have, these have like a little, I don't know if you can see, they have a little hole in them. And that some of them I may drill out, make a little bit bigger so that I can take an electric, the little electric lights like you'd use on a cord uh, for like a village, like a Christmas village or something like that. And you, it's got the little squeezy tabs and you put it in and let them go and they kind of sit in there. Um, I have a bunch of those. I buy those a lot because I use them a lot on different projects. So I think if I made this hole a little bit bigger, I could make it so one of those could go in there and it could be a light or you could take apart, I guess you could take apart a lamp. wonder if I have one I could take apart and just use the cord and the lamp pot and glue it really good and then put an Edison bulb inside or something like that. This one, um, because I have six of them, I, I've got a variety of different things that I can do with them. The first one that I wanna do though, I'm gonna just show you what I'm gonna, what I'm, my thought process is. Um, so I want to cut down some strips like this. This one's too thick, I think. I think it's too thick. I'm gonna need it a little bit thinner than that, but I want it, I don't want it too thin. Probably like um, paint stick thin. This one's a little bit, this is like a double paint stick. It's thick, thick wise. So I think I want it a little bit thinner than that. Um, and I'm gonna make three per lantern. And what I'm gonna do is use them as uh, feet down at the bottom and then sides so that I can hook them to the sides of the hoop on the bottom. And then this one I'm gonna just take and I'm gonna take out the screw, pull the tabs out and I'm gonna close it in a little bit so it's not the size of the one on the bottom, I want it smaller. So when I put my netting around it, my screen, uh, which I bought in a big roll. It's upstairs because it's cold down here. I'm down in my basement craft room. Uh, and I don't do a lot down here unless I have to cut and things because it's cold. But anyway, I want to put that around the outside and or the inside. Now that I'm thinking, I may want the legs and feet on the outside. That might be what I do. I don't know. We'll see what I do when I get there. But um, so I want to... Make this smaller, big enough, just big enough so you can like reach in and put like a candle in there. Or if you were to put a light up underneath, you could reach in and like change the bulb or put a new bulb or whatever you want to do. Uh, you can put decor inside. You can make a scene, a little vignette inside. I don't know how much you can see it with the screen that I have. It's black. Um, so... But what I want to do first is what I did was I measured. Let me get some of these. I measured how high I want my um, lantern. We're gonna call this a lantern. Uh, my lantern would be. So I think I measured eight inches. I mean, you could go different different heights, you can make them taller. I'm gonna go small, short, I guess is what I wanna say. I wanna go short first and see how well my pieces of wood hold. Um, where they're gonna be a little thinner, I don't want them to 
you know, start leaning to one side or the other. I want them to be good. So it might be better to have a thicker one like that, but I kind of wanted it thinner. So um, I'm thinking about eight inches, which is, is that eight inches? Yeah, right about there is how tall, but I'm also gonna have, so it's actually gonna be more like seven and a half because I'm gonna have a little, I'm gonna drop those pieces of wood down just a little bit so I can have some feet so it can be off the off the bottom or you can put them flat I mean you, I've got six of them I can do whatever uh, I'm trying to think at the flea market how much I paid for those because it was a button and I was like holy mackerel there was six of them and I think I paid like four or five dollars and again I've never seen the ones with the bottoms in them so immediately I looked at that and went oh I can make like a an old-fashioned old timey vintage antique looking lantern um so just simple and you can dress it up as much as you want you can you can homespawn it you can uh pip bury it you can greenery whatever you think you want to do we'll try some different ways to decorate it but first thing i want to do is cut down a bunch of these and i just have some scrap wood here then I'm gonna zip off the top so that it's eight inches and just zing it right down the table saw uh, at the right width that I want. And I have another one here. So if I need it, I don't think I will, but I think I'm gonna make enough so I can do, maybe I'll start with two because the other ones I may wanna make them taller. I may want taller ones. But my only issue is how sturdy are they going to be until I get them put together? I don't know. So we're going to just start with that and see what we can come up with. Okay, these say they're eight inch so they're gonna be eight inch bottoms as an eight there so I'm just gonna take them apart um, let's see the first thing I want to do I think is take take this totally completely off and get these little these little things off I need it to overlap and they won't with those little clips on there. Okay, I did this one. Not very pretty. Not very pretty, but we are going to overlap. So you're not going to see that one side. And then this side, I don't know how much it'll let me overlap. Quite a bit, actually. And then this side where it's got a hole there, I could probably put this over it and you'll never see it so you'll never know it's there it is cracked a little bit but i think once i glue it and get that together it'll help seal it well, let's see how much smaller see oop, smaller we can make it like i said i want it big enough so you can put your hand down in and put like a candle or you know you can do different size candles because it's a pretty big base and that's the only way you're going to be able to access the inside is through the top. So that shows about how much I'm going to make that smaller. I don't know if it gets pretty resistant the smaller I go. So I'm gonna, I like that better. 
That's a lot. That's a lot smaller. Can you see how much smaller that is? So I like that. I like that right there. But um, I'm going to have to use a combination of wood glue and hot glue and hold it for a minute. So let me get this other this other one off. Let's hope I don't get too... I just try to do it gentle, but it's in there pretty good. Oh, sugar. We can still work with that. Again, we're going to make it smaller, so. Wish that would just come out. I wonder if you if I tapped from this side and pushed it out. Um, I don't have anything up here. Okay, so I broke that off, but it's okay because, again, we're going to make this smaller anyway, as much as it'll let me. And I guess I could get it wet. Sometimes when you wet the wood, it's more bendable. So, but see, you won't even be able to see the broken piece unless you are on the inside, you know, can see on the inside. And this is going to be covered up by one of the supports so you're not even going to see that so okay um let's see what do we want to do first first i think we'll get these so they're where i want them the size we'll get them glued i gotta plug in my glue gun um get them glued get them secure let them sit for a little bit and then um, I can, I want to stain everything, like just an antique wax stain. Uh, so I'm going to do that. Even these. hope that holds we're gonna double up we're gonna triple up put three clamps on there because there's a lot of resistance with this it doesn't want to really go that far but it's gonna do it because I want it to okay I'm just waiting on the other one to dry but this one's all dry so what I'm gonna do is take watered down antique wax and just go over this raw wood. It makes it um, easier to conceal. Makes it look aged and older, which is what I like. So I just want to go over that. Most of it you're not going to be able to see because what I have is um, black screening so it's going to be covering that but you're still going to be able to see through the holes so there that really stains up nice isn't that a pretty color nice dark rich wood look so I'm just going to do that and then I'm going to do this part here do anywhere where it's a light color. I don't know. We'll go in there and see what see what it looks like. Yeah, I may do the bottom. Well, this one I'm going to have to anyway because I don't want to leave that undone, but it's not a big deal. But yeah, so that's what I'm going to do 
with all these pieces and get them all covered. And when that other one is stuck together and dry really good, I'll do the same thing to that one too. I also want to stain these sticks that I cut out. I'm going to do the sides, the top, and the back side. It's a whole thing is getting covered with this watered down antique wax. Okay, so this is the screen that ended up getting its charcoal. Clear Advantage it's called. I don't know. It's 36 by 84. I just found something I like the price of and just went with it. I'll link it down in the description if I can find it um, and if you want to pick up a roll of it. But yeah, you can replace your screens with this with a couple tools and it works well. I've done it before, but this one is going to be screen for an old looking lantern. So we get it open. Now they have metal screen and that's just, I mean, you could use that, but it's just too tough on my hands. This is like a nylon, very flimsy, very, you can, you know, do whatever with it. So it's not gonna help in holding up my lantern at all. So I need to just be able to cover it. That's all I need to do. That's why I have the, the wood braces on it. So the first thing I wanna do is cut this down. I'm gonna cut it down eight inches because I'm gonna to have to trim some off. Uh, at the top or the bottom or whatever, because I've got a little bit of a, a making some feet on the bottom using the eight inch sticks. Let's see if I can get this straight. Straight-ish. I decided to go with the screening around the inside lip of the bottom tray and then I can kind of hide that glue and hide the end of that. I was going to wrap it around the outside and up underneath and do all kinds of extravagant things to hide it, but really it's supposed to be an antique looking you know, vintage, I don't know, just something old and something that somebody put together to, to have a light so they could go to the outhouse. I don't know. <laughs> That's my story and I'm sticking to it. So uh, I just wanted to create something that, that looked kind of different. So I, I think this is going to work really well with it on the inside. All right, so I know this one's going to be, this one's going to need a support or a leg or whatever. So we're gonna put one right there. So we're gonna start in my glue again. I'm gonna start right here. And we're gonna make I'm going to do it like that and leave about that much for feet. Now I'm going to have to measure that and do all the other ones the same. But that's going to be, that's going to meet up right with this back piece so I can attach that. Now I wonder because, I wonder if I can staple that on there. I wonder. I'm going to stand up. Yes, I can. There, so that's gonna have a little, little foot down at the bottom there. Once that dries, that'll be nice and sturdy. And then I can glue the screen up against this once I get all, the, all three legs on. So I need to figure out where I wanna put my legs and I need to figure out how long. And you don't have to, you could have it sitting on the bottom, you know, on the table. I just thought it would look cute with legs on it. That's another reason why I stain first 
is because sometimes a glue will get on there and it will it will seal it and it won't let you stain your piece and then you'll have like a white spot. So you don't want that to happen. All right. And then those are leaning in a little, which is what I want. I want to be able to lean them in so that I can get my pieces here onto there. So let's see. Um, this is the back. So, and I want to cover up. I don't have to, but I want to try and cover up that piece. So we can either go like this and lean it in. And then I can wrap the netting around or I can go this way. Let's see, this is the inside. Like so. And then I can attach. I'm going to start with one leg and just go for it. A lot of glue. Oh, that's not going to stay. Okay, I did this one. I got it together as far as gluing the, the screen to the posts. This one I did flush. So it's just going to sit right on the, you know, right on the, table or wherever you're going to have it. Um, I haven't put the top on yet because it's still drying. It popped open on me, so I had to get it glued up again and stapled. I've been using staples. They are working along with glue. So I think once it dries, it'll be a lot sturdier. I grabbed one of my taper candles that I have in my, on, it's on my, they're on my Etsy store. Um, this has got glue on it. Anyway, uh, so I grabbed one of those and I put a couple AA batteries in it. And my friend Chris gave me a whole bag of these candle holders. And um, I thought maybe I would glue that down inside. And then I can put my candle down in there. Um, and that would be a really nice little thing to put inside there. Now that limits you though, because if I glue that, that's all that you can put in there are those taper candles. Whereas with that thing, um, you can put the big f fat ones in as big as they'll fit through the hole, through the top. So, but I thought I could do a little bit of both, um, but I'm gonna have to, that, that sits in there really good, it holds so it won't fall out. So that was my main, that was why I was checking it. But these are on my Etsy shop. If anybody is looking for them, they're the little taper candles. I grubby them up myself and they work really well. I do grubby the top, so it is muted, but it's a primitive candle. That's just, for me, that's how they're supposed to be. So if you don't like them grubbied and muted, light then don't buy them i've had people buy them and say oh well the stuff on top mutes it well that's just that's how i do it there's probably people out there that do it differently but i need to um make this so it doesn't stand out so well in there see how much it stands out you can see it really good through the through the screen so 
I was gonna mention, you also could do this with chicken wire. If you wanted to work with chicken wire, you could make a chicken wire one. And you could do them so that they don't taper up. That's just kind of what I had for a vision. I really like the look of that. screen will stay flat. I did trim the screen around the top with a pair of scissors, but it didn't quite get down below the wood like I wanted it to. So I'm laying it down and I'm taking a razor and I'm just going across the inside just a little bit around the top and cutting the screen so that uh, you can't see it come up over the edge. I want a nice clean edge. So as you're looking at the lantern, you don't have that screen peeking up over the top. And because this is like a nylon material, it cuts very easily with a little bit of a, a razor here. So I just carefully went around that and and cut that all off. Okay, so I added jute rope to each of them, just drilled a hole in the side big enough for my rope, tied a little knot, you could do it inside or outside, however you want. And this just makes it so you can hang it if you want to. And um, nothing too heavy, of course. I mean, it's, it's fairly sturdy, but I mean, I wouldn't put too, anything too, too heavy in there and hang it. But this is one of my candles that I do. This is the three by four. Uh, candle and I grubby these up myself. I have some that are just candle, battery candles, and you have to turn them on and turn them off. And then I have some that have a remote for a timer. So there's that. And then I'm going to stick that in there. And then this one you can put whatever you decide you want in there. I thought of finishing off the edges with some rope as well, like just around up here, and I may still do that to make it look more finished. But I like the primitive look of these. This is coming off a little bit. So, um, I don't know, I may just leave it the way it is. But I like it, I think it looks kind of cool. And I like it with the feet, and I like it without the feet. So either one. So let's see them styled. Okay, we're gonna do this one first. This is the one with the just the taper candle in there. And I have, you could do greenery. Put some greenery down in there. I think that looks really pretty. I like the sophisticated look of that with the greenery. So I think that looks really good. Awesome. I have just a piece of 
I don't know, it's just little branches. Put that in there, is that gonna fit? There we go. So you could do that, and then you could put your greenery on top, or you could just do this, and then put your greenery. And then see how much that adds down at the bottom, and it makes it fuller looking. I really like that look. I've got some crazy pit berries here. They really need to be worked on. Let's see if we can. Usually pit berries, you can make them do what you want them to do okay there you go there's pit berries in there that looks really good and then of course if you wanted to raise them up you could put this in there and then your pit berries on top so there's that one okay and then here's the one with the feet and then you can put whatever you want for candles in there Right now it's just the three by four candle. Nice big chunky candle. So we can leave that in there. And again, we can just, we can do something like this. Something simple. And then I can't really, don't think. Um, I wonder if I could, hang on. The hole is too small for my candle to sit in, so I gotta see if I can get that to sit in there. Oh yeah, oh that sits nicely. Oh, I like that look. I really like how that looks. I like this raised up a little bit. I think that looks so good. Okay, and then we have, what else do we have? I have another little thing of pit berries I'm gonna put in there. And then you could put your candle in there. And that looks really cute too. And of course you could hang it. Um, you can tie homespun around it if you wanted to make it uh, a little more frillier, I guess. So you could do that. Okay, I ripped off a piece of black and tan homespun. So I'm just gonna tie it off to the side here. There. You could do that, makes it a little more primitive. Now these staples, you can rust them up or you can paint them black. I may hit them with a little bit of black. See if I can hide them just a little bit. You could also take this, put it on there and just glue it so it goes up over those staples so you don't see those, but there's some down here. But I think that looks really cute. I also popped a little greenery pot in there and just to see what that looked like. I added a little wreath around the lantern with the candle inside and I thought that looked really nice. It would be great for a tabletop um, and I thought it was a nice primitive look. I hope you enjoyed my kind of antique looking, vintage looking, uh, primitive style lanterns. I hope you try and make one yourself. You don't even have to use the ones with bottoms on them. You could make like a little cloche with one and do it that way. I think that would look really cool. Let me know down in the comments what you think. Do you like the one with the feet or not? Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and have a great day.